Greg Stocks. I wanted to do a quick tutorial on processing astrophotos, what I think is really the easiest way, and I'm going to use this photo of the Elephant Trunk Nebula as an example. And I have probably a little bit of an unorthodox workflow, although it uses mostly free software other than Photoshop, and it's a little bit of a hybrid approach. So let me just walk through what I do. So I start, first of all, as probably a lot of you do, using Deep Sky Stacker. And I just find that that gives me good results. It does the calibration, it does the alignment, uh, I, it does the stacking, but I don't really like the way it handles stretching. So from Deep Sky Stacker, I'll use it to do the alignment and the stacking and the averaging. Then I will save that as an unstretched FITS file, which is a raw file format, and that gives us the most flexibility possible. And I have it unstretched, and that's a checkbox that you can you can check or uncheck in the uh, Deep Sky Stacker software. Then I take that unstretched FITS file into FITS Liberator, which is another free software, and this is, uh, I think, supported and distributed by NASA and ESA and other people. And it does one thing. It reads a FITS file. It gives you lots of different stretching algorithms you can apply, and then you can save it as a TIFF file. So I use FITS Liberator to create a stretched TIFF file, and now we have something ready for Photoshop to read. So I can load that into Photoshop, do additional stretching, but more importantly, I apply color to the image to blend the, the different monochrome channels into red, green, and blue, and output that as a Photoshop file, which I then bring into Lightroom, and I use Lightroom to tweak, crop, and so forth, and eventually export JPEGs or the different photos that I'm going to share. Photoshop and Lightroom, of course, come bundled together with the Photographer's Bundle, uh, $10 a month for that, and the other software is free. So let's just walk through real briefly how this all works, and I'm going to start with Deep Sky Stacker. Now, I have already loaded two Hydrogen Alpha subs and two Oxygen subs, so I've got these all four loaded, and for this example, I'm not going to work with the different calibration frames, but you could load darks and flats and so forth over here just the same way. I've checked to stack the two hydrogen and I've left oxygen unstacked, unchecked so they'll just be ignored. I've also right clicked on one of the hydrogen files and chose use that as a reference frame. What that's going to do is it's going to align the hydrogen files to that one star pattern but then after I process this one, and I've actually already processed it and saved it, I will uncheck these, and now we're into the second step, which we'll go through completely. I'll check the two oxygen files, but I still have this hydrogen file as the reference frame. So that's going to cause these oxygen frames to be aligned to the hydrogen, so I don't have to mess with trying to align those later in Photoshop. Then I'll just click on Register Stacked Images. Uh, I like to go to Advanced and just check the number of stars to make sure it's finding a few hundred stars. Um, you don't want too many, you don't want too few. Somewhere, seems like in the 300 to 800 range seems to work fairly well. And this will probably be somewhere in that range. It had to stop and ponder a little bit, I guess. but. Yeah, 462, that's okay. So we'll just go ahead and click OK and OK again. So now it's going to go through and align and stack the two oxygen frames, but they'll be aligned, like I said, to the hydrogen frame. That's going to make it real easy as we move through the process. When I load these two into Photoshop, they're already aligned. I don't have to move them around. I don't have to use different blending modes to try to figure out are the stars aligned or not. Uh, they'll just already be aligned right out of Deep Sky Stacker. And once this is done, it will load the file in preview form. One of the drawbacks of Deep Sky Stacker is that its stretching algorithms seem to be somewhat crude and difficult to control. Sometimes I've had good luck, most of the times I have not. And what I have found is the stretching algorithms in FITS Liberator 
really work nicely. Uh, they give you a lot of different choices. You can adjust how aggressively you want to stretch an image and choose different algorithms that give you uh, a lot of control over the final result. So here's the oxygen and of course it's showing me a stretched preview but I can save this as an unstretched image which is what I want to do. Now I want to save it as a FITS format so that I can bring it into uh, FITS Liberator. So I'll choose Save Picture to File and I'm gonna just name this elephant trunk and this is 203 images and it's from Deep Sky Stacker. So we'll save that. Now we'll go over to Fitz Liberator and I mentioned I had already done the, the hydrogen file and in fact I already have it loaded into Fitz Liberator. And let's just quickly reset the image. And when you do a reset, it defaults to a linear function. You can see the histogram down here. And this drop-down gives you lots of different stretching algorithms, uh, powers, exponents, arcsine, and so forth, uh, logarithmic. I have found this arcsine tends to work really well. Uh, it gives you kind of a gentle stretch in the uh, highlights but more aggressive in the shadows where you want to bring out the, the nebula and you can you adjust the dark slider to get a dark level and the higher up it is the darker it's going to be and then you can adjust the mid-tone level to bring those mid-tones up and generally what I like to, what I do is I'll zoom in and for instance here, I know this is a double star, and right now the stars are getting bloated so that we lose that visibility of the double star. So I might back off the highlights a little bit until we can see the, the two stars there, or at least see some indication of the two stars, and make sure I'm not blocking up the darks too much. And at this point then, I will just save this file, and I will save it as a DSS and fits. That lets me know that this is a uh, one that's been through Deep Sky Stacker and through uh, Fits Liberator. Once that's done saving, I will open the Oxygen file, which is right here. Now I've checked um, free settings, so by default this will bring in the Oxygen file with the same stretch parameters that I used on the Hydrogen but it's a, a lot different file, so in this case I'm going to be better off to just reset and start from scratch. Again, I'll go to ArcSign for the stretch algorithm and then adjust the parameters to try to bring out as much as I can without bloating that star too much. And then I'll save this file, and again I'll just append the uh, and fits to this. So now we have two TIFF files. We've gone through Deep Sky Stacker. We've created an intermediate fits file that was unstretched. We've gone into Fits Liberator and applied a stretch algorithm there. Now we'll go to Photoshop, and what I want to do is load files into Stack which is under the file menu, scripts, load files into stack. And what this is going to let me do is choose two different files that I can load as individual layers. And the two that we want are the, the 2HA and the 203, and these are TIFF files. You can see we also have the, the FITS files in here now. So I'll just click OK and then OK. And Photoshop's now going to load these two TIFF files, each one on its own layer. So we'll have the hydrogen on one layer and oxygen on a separate layer. It looks like that's the oxygen layer and there's the hydrogen. And I don't know why, but I always like to have the hydrogen on the bottom. It just has worked well for me that way. Now, here's where I see a lot of people kind of run off the rails. What we want to do is 
blend color through the channels, red, green, and blue, and assign, in this case, I'm going to assign hydrogen to the red channel and oxygen to the green and blue channels. And there are a lot of hard ways to do that. I'm going to do this the easy way, uh, and then we'll back up and clean it up a little bit. But first thing we have to do, because these came out of a monochrome camera, these are still grayscale images, so I need to go to Image Mode RGB Color, and that'll convert this into a color image so that we have the three channels. I'll target I'll target the top layer, which is our oxygen layer, and just right-click out here on the, to the right of the name. I'll double-click, and that will bring up the blending options. And it looks like it did not convert to RGB, so let me try this again. Ah, I missed a... I missed a uh, pop-up menu asking if I wanted to merge the two layers. No, I don't. I want to keep them separate, so I'll don't merge. So now we have an RGB image. And you can see up here that this says this is an RGB 16-bit image. That's what came out of the uh, Fitz Liberator. I had it set to save a 16-bit TIFF. Again, double-click to the right of the layer name. Now when we look at the blending options, you can see it lists the three channels, red, green, and blue, and the check mark by each means to include those channels in this layer. I want this layer to be only green and blue. I don't want red in the oxygen, so I can simply uncheck red, click OK, and we now have an HOO, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen, mapped to red, green, and blue, and we're 80% of the way there. We just need to individually adjust these to get a good color balance and to get the kind of contrast that we want. I'm going to undo this momentarily, and so I'll just turn this back to a full red, green, and blue, so we're back to seeing it in, in grayscale. And what I want to do is add a couple of curves. So to, for, first I'm going to turn off the oxygen layer, I'll add a curve to the hydrogen layer, and we can give this a little bit of an S-curve to bring out a little bit more of the structure. And then what I want to do is, I've already clicked, targeting the curves layer, shift-click on the, the layer below it, and then Control-G, or Command-G on a Mac, We'll put those two into a layer, and I can name that layer Hydrogen. And this is just good bookkeeping, but also you'll see in a minute how that helps. Now I'll turn the Oxygen layer on. Again, I want to add a Curves layer, and we can add a stretch to darken the background and bring out a little bit more of the Oxygen signal. And then again, I will shift-click on the oxygen layer, Control-G, and title this as Oxygen. Now I can turn that layer on and off along with the, the curve, but I can also now double-click on the group, turn off the red channel like we did on the individual layer, and now we have a red, green, and blue image but we also have a curve on each one of them, and because this curve is in the group, it's only affecting the oxygen. And we likewise have a curve affecting only the hydrogen. So as I adjust these up and down, I'll actually change the contrast and the brightness of each of those layers, but I'm also changing, to some extent, the color. So if I, want, if I want less of the uh, oxygen layer, I can turn that down a little bit. I can make the background darker, which lets more of the red through, or a little bit brighter to let more of the blue through. And then when I get all done, if I want to do some curves adjustments to the whole image, I can add a curve on top of the whole image and 
continue to do some stretching there or uh, color color balance layers you know what whatever you normally would do to finish processing the image but the main point was how easy it is you don't have to copy layers or files into channels all you have to do is this one trick of turning the layer on and off in the individual channel and that is the easiest way to produce a uh, an RGB colored image from a monochrome camera. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments, and I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.